Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. Don't let 2023 distract you from God. I want to ask you a question. Do you think 2023 is going to be worse or do you think 2023 is going to be better? The answer is, I think every year from here on is only going to get better and better and better. But that's not necessarily something that should bring us joy. Yes, it's good because it's going to get better and better economically, but it's also going to get more in the pleasures of the world and the distractions of the world and the own carnal passions that people have and the carnal passions that they're following. Let me let you know what I'm speaking about. In the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 through 51, Jesus gives us an inside look into the last days. And you see, a lot of Christians think that the last days are going to decline, 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 decline. And they are going to decline morally and spiritually, but they're not necessarily going to decline financially or luxury-wise or pleasure-wise. No, they're going to decline morally and spiritually, but they're going to rise up financially and in the pleasures and the carnal passions of the world. They're going to keep going up and up and up, but spiritually and morally, they're going to go down, down, down. So the times are going to get better, but the spiritual environment is going to get worse. And the thing that Christians need to do is don't let the good times of the other years that are coming by, don't let the good times and the good pleasures and the financial luxuries and the carnal passions that are just going to grow and grow and grow, don't let these things distract you from your purpose. And your purpose is the life that we now live, the Bible says, we live it to give honor and glory to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who saved us. And in the book of Matthew chapter 24, 36 through 51, Jesus gives us an inside look into the environment and into the attitude that people are going to have before the last days. See, one day Jesus, biblically speaking, is going to return in the clouds to pick up his church to save them from the great tribulation. He's going to come back for his church and he's going to deliver them from that tribulation that the Bible says is going to come upon all the earth. But right before the tribulation that the Bible says is going to come before all the earth, there's going to be an abundance of finances. There's going to be an abundance of pleasures. There's going to be an abundance of luxuries. There's going to be an abundance of moving and dwelling and living in carnal passions. And Jesus compares it to the times of Noah before the flood. Did you know that your Christian life is comparable to Noah building the ark? Because Noah was saved from the flood because he was busy building the ark. He was steadfast on his work. So when the flood came suddenly, Jesus said, the flood came suddenly. So when the flood came suddenly, Noah and his family were saved. Now, did you know one thing that the ark didn't have that God told Noah not to build? He didn't give him instructions for that. He told him how to build the whole ark except don't do this one thing. You know what it was? He didn't tell Noah to put in a steering column. Why? Because our salvation is steered by the Lord. Our salvation is led by Jesus Christ. He is a shepherd. We are the sheep. All we have to do is get into the boat, practice the word of God, and he's going to steer the boat. He's going to take us to salvation. But our salvation is comparable to Noah's ark. And while Noah was building the ark, Jesus says, this is where he begins the parable. Jesus says that that day, the day before the the Lord comes back for his church the day before Jesus returns in the clouds to pick up those who are trusting him to save him from the great tribulation. Jesus said that before that day, it will be like in the days of Noah. And this is what he says. People will be eating, drinking, giving into marriage and marrying. And then the Bible says that the flood came and suddenly swept them all away. So I want you to pay attention to detail in that parable. You can read it on your own in Matthew 24, 36 to 51 if you want. But I want you to pay attention to the detail. He said this. He said people were going to be eating, drinking, giving into marriage, meaning being engaged, making future plans, and marrying. And the Bible says all these things were happening until the day when the flood came. You know what that tells you? And you know what that tells me? That it was a beautiful day. And that tells me that the future looked very bright. Because if people were getting engaged, they were setting a date to be married, maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe for some people two years in the future. They were setting dates in the future. They thought, man, times are good. Nothing is different. Nothing is wrong. Nothing seems to be declining. They were eating, drinking, 
It was even such a beautiful day that people were having parties and picnics. It was such a beautiful day that even some people were actually having their wedding day. Like at the moment when the flood came, there were some people who were actually in the middle of their wedding. Beautiful times. Financial increase. The luxuries and the carnal passions of the world increasing. People didn't see. People didn't expect the flood. But it suddenly came. And then he backs up that parable with another parable right away. We call that a confirmation. Jesus always gave confirmations. He always doubled up many of his parables. One parable was one way. Another parable was a similar way. And I'm talking about 2023 can be good, but don't let it distract you. It's going to grow. The next years are going to grow financially. They're going to grow in the pleasures and the luxury. They're going to grow in the culture in the times. They're going to increase. But spiritually, don't let those things make you decline. Spiritually, don't let those things distract you from building the ark. What do I mean by building the ark? Living out your Christian life. Don't let those things distract you from trusting Jesus. What did Jesus say? And this is comparable to the ark today in our, in our New Testament times. Jesus said, for those who hear my words and put into practice, I'm going to compare him to a wise person who built their house on the rock. The floods came, the rains fell, the winds beat against that house. I'm pretty sure those things were happening in the time of Noah's flood. He said, but because that house was built on the rock, it did not fall. He said, but everyone who hears my words and does not put them to practice, I'm going to compare them to a foolish person who built their house on the sand. The floods came, the rains fell, the winds blew against that house, and great was the crash of that house. Why? Because they heard the words of Jesus, but they didn't put them to practice. I want to tell you, don't get distracted. Keep on serving the Lord. Stay steadfast in the things of God. This doesn't mean don't work. This doesn't mean don't have a life. That's not at all what I'm saying. Because everything we do, we're supposed to do it for the honor and glory to God. You can work. You can start a business. You can get married. You can, you can buy a home. I'm not telling you not to live life. No, we're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. We're supposed to shine in this world and give glory to God. Do the life and live the life that God is placing before you. What I'm saying is don't get distracted from the purpose. The purpose is to be the light of the world. The purpose is to stand out. The purpose is that everything we do, we do it for the honor and the glory of God. Me making this video, I'm doing it for the honor and glory of God. Every time I preach, I'm doing it for the honor and glory of God. Everything we do, we should do it for the honor and glory of God. Lord, thank you because you're the one that blessed me with these finances. Lord, thank you because you're the one that blessed me with this home. Lord, thank you because you're the one that blessed me with this vehicle, this, this form of transportation to take me forward and back. Lord, thank you because you're the one that blessed me with my home. Lord, thank you because you're the one that blessed me with my loved ones who love me and support me and encourage me. Lord, thank you. Always acknowledging that every good gift, like the book of James says, comes from above. So Jesus backs up that parable of the people being like in the times of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage. He backs it up with the parable of a servant. And he says that there's two servants, a wise one and a foolish one. And he said that the wise one, even though his master was taking a long time in returning, the wise one stayed focused on his work. And when the master returned at a time he did not expect, that's the thing about Jesus, it will be at a time we do not expect. There's not going to be any like horrible, scary signs. No, no, no. It's going to be at a time we do not expect, the Bible says. His master returned at a time he did not expect, but the servant was doing what he was supposed to be doing, and the master was pleased and blessed him. But then there was another servant. The Bible calls him a wicked servant. And it says that the wicked servant took his eyes off of the work that God gave him, started putting his eyes on everything else, then he started thinking to himself, just like Eve started thinking to herself when she saw the fruit. Hmm, it's good to the eye. It's pleasing for, it's good for food. It can make me wise. She started thinking in her own understanding. Instead of thinking through the word of God, she started thinking through her own understanding. The Bible says that there's ways that until a person looks right, but the end of those ways is destruction. In her own eyes, she thought the fruit was good, but it brought destruction. And the parable that I'm saying, the wise servant stayed focused and he was blessed. The master blessed him. But the foolish servant got distracted and he started thinking. The Bible literally says he started thinking, my master is delaying. He's taking too long. And the Bible says that he started eating and drinking and beating his fellow servants. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that his master came at a time when he was not expecting. And the Bible says that he put him in the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because he wasn't ready. But I want to tell you, the times are going to get better. 
more finances, more luxuries, more pleasures. That's how it's going to be, like in the days of Noah. But what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to stay focused on the life that God gave us to live, on the calling that God gave us to live, to live for the honor and the glory of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died for us on that cross. Live a life that gives him glory. Live a life that gives him honor. Don't get distracted. Don't think, well, the Lord's taking too long returning. I'm going to start living my own life. No, 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 no. Stay focused on the things of God so that when he returns at a time we do not expect, we can receive the blessings that he has for us. I want to ask you a question. Was this video a blessing to you? If it was, do me a favor. I post several videos a week that I know will be a great encouragement to your life. So if this video encouraged you, do me a favor, subscribe so that you can be alerted every time I post another video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing. Those are greatly appreciated. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Don't get distracted.